heart issues, high blood pressure, being overweight, IBS, all issues that you would think are applicable to people who are older. And yet today's guest at the age of 26 was overweight. He did have high blood pressure and he was diagnosed with IBS. Stick around because you're in for a great treat as Michael Joseph shares his journey of how he resisted going vegan for quite a while, finally decided to, and it changed his life forever. And he's got a really cool haircut. Welcome to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show where your host, Kathleen Gage, shines the spotlight on vegan and plant-based businesses and entrepreneurs from all walks of life committed to cruelty-free eating, healthy lifestyles, animal compassion, and the environment. Enjoy the show. You know, so Michael, I'm really excited to have you here, but you know, I want to point out to people who aren't watching that you and I have had a discussion about who's got the coolest hair. And I think we <laughs> both have cool hair. So with that, um, I'm real curious. Uh, how did you become a vegan? You know, that was actually a long journey. I, um, I had so, quite a few issues that started with, you know, some like chest pain. Uh, and then I started like having high blood pressure. I was overweight. I uh, had high cholesterol and I was like 26 years old, you know? And so I would go in, I went to a doctor and uh, the first thing they told me, he, he ran some tests and he's like, Hey, uh, I think you have IBS. And I was like, okay. So I started doing uh, some research on IBS and I came across the FODMAP diet, uh, which I tried. Uh, and then I came across, uh, um, I tried like a vegetarian diet um, uh, but I, it was a process. It wasn't something that just happened. So kind of give you some background. I come from a really small town, like really, really small town. So I'm from like the back, like a from, it's called plant city. And, and it's kind of grown over time in Florida. It's in between Tampa and Orlando. And a lot of my friends were like farmers, you know, so, or they, they, they ran into hunting or whatever else like that, which is, and, and so I was brought up eating meat and eating dairy. Like that is what, like, it was weird if like we, you didn't have that at every meal. Right. And so I, uh, I, I had never considered being vegan. I had never even considered that as an option. So I went, you know, there was years that I went through where I was like testing, you know, different types of diets. And then I kind of gave up on diets altogether. And I started like, I just started figuring it out for myself. I was like, so what makes me feel good and all of that. And over the course of about two years of two to three years is roughly about that. Uh, I noticed that anything that I, if I was eating, you know, vegetables or if I was eating uh, anything that didn't contain, especially dairy products, then I was feeling great. Like I had my energy back, my, my blood pressure was lowering, just a lot of different stuff. And I just couldn't accept the fact that people were telling me that, that those problems were her hereditary at my age. And so I, um, I just kept on with it. And, and now I've kind of gotten to a point where it just wouldn't make any sense to go back because it's, it's improved my life so much. It's helped, you know, my, my, uh, the way that I think the way that I, you know, handle myself every day, how much energy that I have, um, you know, and, 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 and number one, I think what I kind of forgot for a long time is I was so focused on my business that I kind of forgot about my own health, right? And, and that problem, uh, it, it adds up over time, right? And then, you know, so once I made that switch though, now I'm more like, okay, my health is first because if I'm good, then the rest of my business is good. Absolutely. So how old are you now? Just out of curiosity. 33. Yeah. Okay. So at 33, you know, I could actually be your grandmother, if you believe that it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is crazy. But when you talk about hereditary, it's like, um, in my age group, that's even more prevalent where people have bought into the myth and the, uh, uh, the BS, if you will, about uh, your diseases are hereditary. And mm. a lot of the experts within the plant-based movement, the doctors, um, Dr. Greger, Dr. Um, Furman, uh, they all say it's really what you, uh, you learn about what's at the end of your fork. And so mm. our eating patterns are what really create a lot of the problems. And 
You know, it's interesting because you were such a young man when you started identifying these problems. And the fact that you even said IBS, a lot of men don't want to talk about that. They, you know, mm. like it's and not to be sexist, but men oftentimes will not talk about health issues. You know, it's like they're going to buck up and, and they're going to just <laughs> uh, uh, push their way through it. But um right. What would you say now you said focus, you said energy, you said, you know, just you lost some weight. How much weight did you lose? I was 230 pounds. Holy I weigh, cow. I weigh 165 pounds right now. Oh my gosh. So it's the, like, the, I was it, getting close to that. I was getting, it, close it to was that. when I like the change, it was so drastic in my life. Like it does not make sense for me to go back. Like if you, if you saw me then, and then even how I speak now, is very different. And it's just because I, I think I've had a lot of like with that even has helped me have a lot of self-awareness as well over time. And so, uh, and I, and I attribute some of that is being able to think clearly, you know, and a lot of that is, has come from, you know, the diet and what I put in my own body. Absolutely. Well, you know, I was, I was creeping up to that, that point, I actually got to 212 pounds and I'm about 160 mm. right now, uh, mm. five, five, nine. And um, so I'm at a really healthy weight, went on a run this morning before we started this conversation. And, you know, I'm going to be 68 on my next birthday. And it, it <laughs> just is like, it doesn't make sense to ever go back to the way it was. Now, how much does, um, and we will be talking about your business because I definitely want to talk about, you know, how sure. this has impacted your business. And before we do, I want to remind people that you're listening to the Vegan Visibility Show. This is Kathleen Gage, and I'm talking with Michael Joseph, who is the founder of Podcaster and Growth Consultants.io. That's Podcaster and Growth Consultants.io. We'll be sure to put all that in the show notes, but um, with with the going vegan, how much of that has impacted your business in a way that you've got better focus and all that? What what are like the greatest benefits besides looking great? Because you look great, dude. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I felt like I feel like I've I've went backwards, right, in a good way. So I uh, I was aging. I looked older when I was twenty six than I do now, uh, and in terms of business. And in turn, and not just business, I think personal life too, uh, and pretty much everything across the board it impacts everything. It all starts with you. And when you make that switch to completely plant-based, it just changes everything for you. Like um, the, I, I used to eat for like, because I love the taste, like I wanted the taste and everything else. Now it's more like I'm concerned about how that's going to like, what I put in my body, like how that's going to uh, impact me throughout the day. And when I was eating a lot of the dairy products or any of that other stuff, like I always felt weighted down. I always felt tired. I always felt like I had all these other problems and I just don't have that anymore. It's just gone. And so to say it's like, it's made a substantial impact. Uh, I think it's more important than anything, any strategy that you can do in business. I think, you know, your mindset and, and your, your, what you consume into your body and, and all of that, will have a much greater impact than any tactic or strategy or anything like that. Absolutely. And especially in light of still what's going on with the pandemic and what's happened to business. And, you know, pre-pandemic, I was a keynote speaker and I was on the road a lot and I have not been on the platform in front of an audience for going on two years now. And mm. that's been kind of a shock to the system and a shock to my revenue. It's like, okay, I've got to figure this out. And if I wasn't plant-based, if I wasn't vegan, completely void of all animal and dairy, I don't think I would have handled it with as much grace or focus. So let's talk about your business. Um, now, I know you do have a podcast, mm. which, you know, hot podcast, and um, you also uh, work with experts. Tell us about what you do in your business. Yeah. So essentially the reason why I created the business that I did is because for a while I was a one man show and I was trying to, you know, like create, you know, generate a lot of leads. And what I figured out over time is that uh, if I just focused on one area, did that really, really well, then I could, I could get a ton of like business. I don't need to really be everywhere. But there is a huge benefit to kind of being everywhere, which is why I kind of created Podcaster, because you only need to create, you only need so much time in order. I only need to dedicate like 15 minutes a week and I have all my content, you know, 15 to 30 minutes a week. And then I have everybody else produce my content and I've got tons of content to push out there and then I can promote it. Right. 
Uh, but essentially what, like that is my strategy because that works for our business, but growth consultants, uh, essentially what we do is there's just so much noise, right? And people are saying, you need to do Facebook ads. You need to do SEO. You need to do uh, content marketing. Maybe you should look into this new platform or whatever. It's always something, it's always some sort of tactic. And um, the issue is, is like, it, you're going to spread yourself too thin. There's like this, like what the problem I had is there was like shiny object syndrome. Like people would be like, Hey, you need to do this. And I'm like, okay. And then I would do that. And then somebody else would do this and I'd be pulled all these different directions. Right. Uh, so essentially what we do is we look at, we identify who your audience is. We look at the market from a high level and then we figure out, you know, what, where's the low hanging fruit for one. And then what are the things that we can do? What are the strategies that you can implement and focus on for the long term that are going to have the most impact on your business uh, with the, essentially the least amount of effort, which is essentially why I, I do podcasting, because I spend 30 minutes, like I said, at max, and I have all this content that I can, produce, I can put on you know, 10 different, 20 different channels. Absolutely. And, and it's amazing how many people miss that. It's like mm -hmm. they, uh, they just are on an uphill climb the whole way. And I actually teach people how to get on podcast shows and how to get a lot of visibility, how to repurpose their content. I've been a content marketer for about 25 years now mm -hmm. uh, in my current business. Um, and let's, let's do some real added value here for people. Let's, um, sure. let's take a, um, a, typical client. And I don't think there is anything real typical about any client, but let's mm -hmm. take a, uh, a profile of a client and tell us what their big problem is and then how they would go about getting that visibility and really gaining uh, maximum results for their efforts. Yeah. Well, what I often see is, is people come to me uh, saying, Hey, I want to do a Facebook app or I want to do this. They already have it in their mind what they want to do because someone has already convinced them. And so I think taking a step back, I like to think of marketing, Facebook or YouTube or anything, those are tactics. Uh, I like to think it is three, three levels, right? There's, there's concepts. And I think I mentioned this to you before. There's concepts, there's strategies, and there's tactics. Everyone's looking for that one tactic to change their, their business. But on a conceptual level, if you understand the concept that whole, so like how funnels work and how the whole process works and the buying process and what that all looks like and where your clients are, if you understand that, it's really easy to figure out where you should market and move the needle. For example, I had someone who come, came to me and was like, hey, I'm a photographer. I want to grow uh, my LinkedIn. And I'm like, okay, well, do you serve like businesses? And they're like, no, we, we, we work with, uh, wedding, you know, we do weddings. And I was like, oh, are you on Pinterest? And she's like, no. And I'm like, well, it starts right there. Like, who is your client? If, if you're targeting people who are getting married, like people that are getting married are all over Pinterest, you know, like it would probably make sense to have a pretty strong presence on that platform versus LinkedIn, which is more like a professional platform. And they're not really necessarily looking for that. And the people on there, it's usually like during like business hours, like, you know, after hours though, you know, people are on Pinterest or whatever. And that's, that's probably where you'd want to market that type of business. So I would say it definitely starts with understanding your client and understanding who your ideal buyer is ideally, right? Like Walmart and Target and Whole Foods are not the same. And there's a reason for that, you know? So I think people try to spread themselves too thin too often and try to sell to everyone. And that ends up hurting you in the long run. So I think uh, really getting crystal clear on who your clients are and figuring out where they are will serve you very well. Okay. And we've identified, okay, like myself, I now work primarily with vegan businesses. And, and yep. you know, that was a very conscious choice uh, after a part of my business fell off the face of the earth because of the pandemic. And I stepped back and I evaluated and I said, okay, based on nearly 27 years at that point in business, um, who do I enjoy working with? What am I really good at? What's my sweet spot? What's my passion? And it made perfect sense for me to transition everything into the vegan and plant-based industry. So I've identified my market. What's my next step? Yeah. Once you I identify your market, then you want to identify the opportunities um, is what I do. So I like to identify opportunities that I see that one, that 
that I know I can actually do. Uh, and, and, you know, not something that's beyond my skill level or my team skill level or anything else like that. Identify opportunities and then I would rank them. There's actually this, this, uh, there's this ranking formula called ICE where it's based on impact, confidence, and ease. Hmm. And so if you can rank it on that score and give it an average, then you can figure out where to essentially focus your efforts. Okay. So I've identified my market. I know where I'm going to focus my efforts. What's my next step? The next step is to find either you do it yourself and go one, like there's two ways that you could do it. You could either spend money or you can work really hard. It's one of the two. Um, so you're either going to have to find somebody who is really good in that, in that area and work with them, uh, you know, to create a strategy strategy before you start hitting in the, before you start execute. So then you want to create a strategy and then put an execution plan in place. And then once you start executing, you, like the key thing that I see, and I did it myself for a long time, I was just executing and not looking at any numbers. And so like understanding like key KPIs and exactly what is making an impact, it's not only going to help you, but it's also going to help the people that are helping you because right. it, it, otherwise it's just, it can, it turns into a mess from my experience. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's so interesting because a lot of people don't look at their numbers. And I was talking to somebody recently about, they said, I want to give something away for free. And I said, great, what are you going to give away for free? And they mm -hmm. said, well, I'll, I'll do a video. And I said, well, how do you know your market is interested in videos? Because a lot of that also has to do with age group. It has to do with background. It has to do with availability. And mm -hmm. I said, here's what I would recommend. You do some AB testing. And in that you look at where are you getting the most click throughs, where are you getting the most opt-ins, opt look at your conversions, and then whatever you're getting the most results on, that's what you go deep into. And a lot of people never think in those terms. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really glad to hear you say that. Now, for people who don't know what a KPI is, go ahead and uh, tell them what that is. Yeah, the KPI is really uh, the key performance indicators, right? So essentially, um, it's it it's different for everyone. So it, maybe you want to grow your brand. Maybe you want to grow your traffic. Maybe you want signups, maybe whatever it is. And it depends on, on the marketing strategy that you're putting in place. So we have different KPIs per channel uh, and on what we are trying to accomplish. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, like good KPIs, you know, it, it depends. Like, do you want leads? Do you want sales? Do you want you know, it really, it really just depends on what you're trying to, to achieve with your marketing and your efforts, but you need a way to measure it. There has to be some sort of measurement uh, involved. Excellent. So, Excellent. so if, you just, if, if you're trying to grow a brand, maybe that's followers. If you're, if you're trying to uh, increase sales, maybe it's leads or maybe it's, it's direct sales on an e-commerce store or something like that. Um, you know, it's, it really, it really just depends on the business and what your goals are. Uh, so I think, I think taking a step back and thinking long-term and then working backwards and breaking it down into pieces on what you like. So I think of a 10 year strategy, I break it down to pieces, work backwards and all the way down to like, say a 30 day, like 30 day, three month, six month, nine month, one year, two years, you know, like that five year, right. 10 year is kind of how I do it. Um, and then work backwards, and then you can identify your KPIs pretty easily. Wonderful. And for people to realize that they have to be flexible too, because we had uh, a lot of uh, uh, strategies and plans in place pre-pandemic. And when the pandemic hit, I, I really had to pivot quite rapidly. And a lot of people say, well, I want it to go back to the way it was. Well, I got news for you folks. It ain't going back to the way it was. So you have to deal with what is today. And I want to remind people that you are listening to the Vegan Visibility Show. This is Kathleen Gage, and I'm talking with Michael Joseph. And Michael, how will people get in touch with you? What's the easiest way? The easiest way is by email. Uh, you can reach me at mj at usepodcaster.com or mj at growthconsultants.io. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm pretty accessible and always on my email. Okay. Is there a website they can go to or a, a, a social media platform? It, what's your favorite? Yeah. So on social media, uh, I, I'm primarily myself. I'm, I'm actually only active on Instagram uh, at vegan underscore Mac. M A C K. I love that. Uh, so, I love that. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, and then uh, websites is usepodcaster.com and then growthconsultants.io. 
Okay, we'll make sure to put that in the show notes. And let's go back to um, the whole vegan conversation. Where do mm-hmm. you see vegan businesses going in the future? Because I know there's been a pretty substantial growth uh, pattern going on. Um, people are becoming more educated. Um, and, and some people, if they're completely immersed in the vegan lifestyle, they think that everybody's becoming vegan and that nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, we've got a long ways to go. But where do you see business going in the vegan space? I think, I think right now, if you're in a, a vegan, if you have a vegan business right now or a plant-based business, um, you're going to be in for the long haul because uh, we're at the beginning times, uh, I think. Um, it's very, very, still very young. And uh, I think the entire, I, I, I feel pretty confident that we're all going to switch to a plant-based diet just because it makes sense. Uh, and the more that gets out there, you know, I don't know how long that's going to take. It could be 20 years, 30 years. Uh, but I think you're, you're kind of at, you're, we're at the very beginning stages. So it's an exciting time for people who run these types of businesses because the opportunity is immense. And there's, there's a lot of, a lot of people who are making the switch and there's a lot more information than there was. You know, Um, there is, and there's a lot of misinformation though, because um, we actually recently had our roof completely redone and the roofer, uh, we started having a conversation about health and the pandemic and things of that nature. And he said, well, I was getting inflammation. So I gave up all dairy and I gave up red meat, but I'm, I'm eating chicken because I know chicken is healthy. And I said, well, if you don't mind, can I give you some information on chicken? And I, he's like, okay. And I talked to him about factory farming, about the toxins, about the steroids, about the antibiotics, everything that goes into animal production that goes into our body. He was shocked. And I happened to have a stack of books that I was going to take to, uh, we have a little local library in the neighborhood, one of those little buildings, little whatever you call kiosk or something. And I was going to take them down there. And I said, could I give you one of these books? And it was the book called Hooked by Michael Moss. And it Mm. talks about how the food manufacturers have gotten people hooked on certain foods to do with salt, sugar, and fat. And it's amazing how many people do believe that certain meats are healthier than other meats. And so it's really a process of just raising awareness. So in closing, Michael, what are your final thoughts for people and what can you recommend for them to really jumpstart what they're doing in business? Yeah. So to kind of touch on what you were just saying, there was also a show called what the health on uh, Netflix, I think it was, or Hulu, one of the two, it's very solid resource as well. Uh, But for people who are growing their, their business, um, you know, first off, it's always you. Like start with yourself, your own health, your own personal, your spirit. Uh, I think it's mental, um, what you consume, and then, uh, you know, your spiritual and relationships. Make sure those are 100. Uh, bef- like before, like I used to do the reverse where I was working and working and working and working and working. And we all want to do that because we all want to grow our companies. But uh, it does, it's not a good long-term strategy. It's really right. not. Uh, when you reverse it and you can figure out how to focus on high impact areas, then you can really just focus on you know, the other stuff that's really going to build uh, you up so your business will also fall along with you is, is what I think. Yeah. Outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, Michael, this has been delightful. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to share information with the, uh, the community. And I call it the community because it's your community. It's my community. It's people who want to learn how to build their business and they want to do it in a healthy and ethical way. This is Kathleen Gage with Vegan Visibility. And I encourage you go out, do what you're here to do, eat compassionately, live compassionately and be compassionate. Have a great day. You've been listening to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show. Be sure to subscribe to get notified when the next episode is live. And we always appreciate reviews. Join us next time for more inspiration, education, and motivation to build your business one cruelty-free and healthy person at a time.